All right. Welcome everyone to today's podcast. We're talking about optimizing your weight loss plan. Think about what we're talking about here. It's not enough just to have your plan on day one and think that's the plan you're going to be following on day 200. We need to optimize this plan to make it our own throughout the process so that you're not just getting results, but you're also getting better at the way that you're getting results. We're going to go a little meta here. And the way we do that is by optimizing your weight loss plan right from day one and realizing day one's going to be the hardest day of that plan. And I think that's a real comforting idea and thought because each and every day you're going to work to optimize it. Now, what do I mean when I say optimize it? Specifically, I mean that you're going to make it easier, more enjoyable, and more effective. And we're really going to focus a lot on the first two, making it easier and more enjoyable, which is something that dieters never really think because dieters deep down want the plan to be difficult because they a lot of times associate the harder the plan is, the faster, more dramatic the results are going to be. So we need to understand that this isn't just about short-term results. This is about long-term results. And the easier and more enjoyable you make the process you're using and following to get the results you want, the longer you're going to keep it up. And so, again, it's not just enough to say, okay, this is what I got to do. We also want to be simultaneously saying, okay, how can I make this easier? How can I set myself up for success? How can I make this more enjoyable? And again, ultimately, how can I make it more effective as well? But that comes later on because you need some experience in order to figure out what you need to tweak to make it more effective. It doesn't take a lot to figure out how can I make this easier or more enjoyable. The big challenge is that you just haven't been asking this question up till now. You've just been assuming that the process needs to suck, that weight loss is just hard. This is what it is. But as soon as you so open yourself up to the possibility that you could make it easier and more enjoyable, it becomes very interesting because now you realize there's always little things you can do to tweak what you're doing to make it easier. And again, the easier and more enjoyable you make it, the longer you're going to keep it up, the more effective results are going to become and the better results you're ultimately going to achieve. So spend a little bit of time here optimizing your plan instead of just following it. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. Get into them here. Get the old camera set up. Whoop, whoop. There we go. Oh, that's a pretty good shift. <laughs> See if everything works technologically today. Um, is that yes? Yes, and Adele. I, I have trouble seeing names. I see realtor at the end. I can make that word. And then um, the first part I'm having trouble putting, which is the first name I'm imagining. First and last name. Um, yeah. Love it. Make it more enjoyable. That That's the secret. And again, you'd be amazed what you could do. Uh, most of the people I end up working with are uh, perfectionists. And again, perfectionists aren't looking for the easiest way. They want the hardest way because they, again, the harder it is, not only do they think better and faster results, but also it's a little feather in their cap because if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it perfectly. I'm going to do it all the way. But again, when we start aiming some of that energy at figuring out easier, more comfortable ways, man, it, it's amazing what you can come up with. So yeah, that's a great one. What's up, Don? How's it going? Just going to put everyone here. Yeah. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. Any weight loss questions? Any questions are allowed here, as long as it's not how do I how do I do better on my keto plan? <laughs> Just kidding. You could ask that if you want to. As long as you're ready to hear the answer, do something else. I'm joking. Am I? Not really. <laughs> I'll get off of that. I know a lot of people get offended by that. I've I've heard from them, but uh, again, it all comes down to I use keto as an example because regardless of what strategy you want to follow, the real key becomes asking yourself, is this a plan I would like to follow forever? Is this a plan I could see myself doing for the rest of my life? And if the answer is no, you know, I'd really suggest that you consider that uh, there might be another way to do it. Because if we don't take into account how it is to follow it, I think that, you know, we're setting ourselves up for failure because again, you, you've done this. This is the pattern you've been following without realizing it is that you keep choosing these overwhelming, unsustainable strategies to lose weight, and then you can't stick with it and you blame yourself. You know, that that's the thing about dieters. It's like you, you, this horseshit strategy that of jumping into a weight loss plan perfectly on day one. And then when you're not able to do it, then you blame yourself. That that's the part that gets me with dieters and they could do this for decades and never realize it's not you. It's the plan. <laughs> It's the plan you're trying to follow. And it doesn't matter what plan you're trying to follow. I don't give a shit. Keto, Weight Watchers, uh, low fat, low carb, it, just pick your plan. And again, the, the thing is you're, you're jumping into it on day one, uh, trying to do it perfect. And I don't know about too many things in life that you can do right from the beginning perfectly. 
you know, you'd have to let me know, but uh, weight loss ain't one of them. So anyways, what's up, Jody? Looks warm and beautiful, but freezing my ass off. I know that it's a very, it's a tricky day out there. It looks like spring and it is the first day of spring. Uh, but where I'm at, yeah, it's a steady breeze and it's like a cold, steady breeze. So yeah, it's weird. I, I don't know. Is that an older thing? As I get older, I find that I don't like the wind very much. I find myself, I would say getting older, that's one thing I've definitely noticed that wind definitely triggers me and, and affects me more than it used to. So I don't know if I'm unique in that way, but <laughs> can you sit in the sun for a bit? I could sit in the sun if I sat like inside, you know what I mean? Like if I, if I didn't have the wind hit me. Oh yeah. Okay. Don, thank you. Yeah. Wind's the worst, right? Like it's, it just makes me crazy. I don't know. Like it gets me like angry because it's like so violent sometimes. And I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's cold out today too. It's like a steady cold wind. Um, but yeah, that's the call. You know, the call is like, I love like my sofa, my front room and the window, the sun comes right through that. There is nothing better than an afternoon nap in that sun on that sofa. One of, one of my favorites, um, <laughs> the wind. I knew the wind to get to you, Don. I knew the way to get to you, but you'll still walk though. You don't care if it's windy. <laughs> Yeah, Don and Sam were being babies, right? Uh, maybe I am being a baby. It is funny too, because I will tell you, like I, I still go skiing and snowboarding. I haven't gone as much this year. I've been switching over to skiing instead of snowboarding. But um, snowboarding, it's like you stand on the top of some of these mountains. It's, it feels like Everest up there. It's just like it's fifty mile an hour winds. It's so intense. And so I thought that would have made me tougher with regular just wind in the normal world, but it has not. It's made me more sensitive, I guess. <laughs> So that's how it is. Betty Griff says, whenever I go on a big weight loss diet, it's like a poor, poor me mentality. No, I can't go out for dinner because I'm on this diet. Oh, Betty, there you go. You just hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what it's like. Uh, that's exactly what it's like. Poor, poor me mentality. That's just, yeah, that's so common. This is what I mean. Like we can't, but I, you know, so I always talk about mindset. I mean, that, that's what I'm always talking about. Weight, mindset for, for weight mastery here. And I always like to come at it from different angles. And so this is a cool way to kind of go at it too, where if you, we all can, I think most of us can relate to this, this idea like, oh, now I'm going to start eating. Oh, no, I can't eat. I can't eat that ice. I can't go out to dinner. And like, we say it like in this weird way, like, like we're like a child and someone should feel bad for us. And again, I'm, I'm not judging that because we just, we do things like this and it's understanding these things and removing them right from the beginning. That's the secret. That's so much of how I approach weight mastery is looking for these subtle psychological things that sabotage us. And this poor me mentality, I think is one of them. But how do we get rid of the poor me mentality? Now, I think in the typical diet or world, it would just be like, oh, just, just come on, just suck it up. Just suck it up, buttercup, just do it. And there's always this just do it mentality. I'm not saying that sometimes in life you need to just do it mentality, no doubt about it. But I think for most people, that's not gonna work. We need to go a little bit deeper. And I think one of the things that's leading to a, a poor me mentality of, oh, I can't go out to restaurants is this idea that you never get to go out to a restaurant again, or I never get to eat a cake again. I never get to eat a cookie again. I think as soon as you start saying that type of shit to yourself, it's just you start a countdown timer, Count, start, a, start the countdown timer. Cause that's, it's just a matter of time now until you get off your plan. And so there's a lot of these triggers of, you know, things that, that trigger this poor me mentality, but it's almost always what you will notice that the, the, the bigger pattern containing those is this all or nothing mentality where you're saying, okay, I can never do that. And when you hear yourself saying, I can never do that again, just get ready. So you got to become sensitive to when you're doing that. So I would prefer to skip the just, come on, you'll never get to wear a strong. So what is it going to be worth? You have the body. It's not worth it for most people, you know? So instead let's say, wait, wait, whoa, whoa. I don't have to never go to a restaurant again. I can go to restaurants. I'd need to change probably if I'm going out to restaurants seven days a week, maybe I got to switch it down a little bit, but I can still go to restaurants. And so I always take into account that other side of me. And if I hear, oh, well, I'm never going to do that again. I say, wait, what are you saying? We're never going to get to a restaurant again. Yeah, that sounds like a lot, huh? Yeah, hold on a second. Let's, let's take a step back and think about this. Yeah, we want to go to restaurants, right? Yeah, but we can't go to restaurants all the time because then, then we're not happy with our body and our weight. And that, there's that whole thing. Yeah, you're right. Okay. How about we start cutting it down? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, what if we start talking to ourselves like that instead of having this, this big ass, either like this bully in our head, this, this, this strict parent voice in our head, this, this kind of gym rat voice in our head, just come on, come on, come on. And it's like, Jesus Christ, can we, can we give that shit a break and just talk to ourselves like a normal person? Say, yeah, I don't want to never eat a carb again. 
I, I, that's not what I want. That's not how I want to live my life. However, I can't eat all the carbs. So let's find some sweet spot where I'm really happy. And I think if you start orienting around that kind of thinking, it really does a lot to help you with that, you know? So that's what I think. Um, yeah, Don says, because diets are built to fail, finding your own way is key. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. That is definitely true. Um, user 162, learn something new today. Health insurance companies track what we buy at the store and base our premiums off the foods we buy. Well, that is interesting. That's very interesting. Oh, not and, and yeah, that's crazy. I, I can't say I'm surprised, right? Yeah, that, that's where we're going, one way or the other. Huh. That's interesting. And uh, you know, in fairness, hey, good for them. <laughs> I remember I don't I forget the guy now, like in uh, New York City, he was gonna tax the soda, you know, and people lost their minds. And it's like, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, the only problem taxing alcohol and tobacco, do you? Like clearly, oh, we should have as much sugar as we want. And people are so offended by that. But yeah, get ready. Because the, the medical costs of overweight and obesity related illnesses are off the charts. It's so yeah, get ready. That that's the future staring at you right now. So but but what the shit? Can you guys see me? What's going on here? Lord. Uh yeah, there's all sorts of costs to eating that stuff. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I didn't know that. Um, Trey Donald says, yeah, I'm much more relaxed about food since I let myself have fun foods at times. I'm not worried about never having fun foods again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fun foods. We got to, I think, you got to engineer them into your diet instead of just trying to completely avoid them. I think that totally trying to avoid them is the worst plan. The abstinence model, I rarely see work for food long term. Because you're always, your brain's a pleasure seeking machine. And so to me, programming yourself thin is all based around the idea of getting the most pleasure possible. And when you go on a diet, you're saying, oh, I'm going to get this amazing pleasure maybe sometime in the future, but I'm going to get rid of all pleasure now. And then when you don't lose 10 pounds this week, you're like, well, what the hell am I doing this for? It, it's, it's a real bad mental strategy. And so I think it makes a lot more sense to say, you know, I'm really going to clean. I'm going to focus on cleaning up five days of my week. First, I'm going to have two days where I enjoy myself and I'm going to start to moderate and learn how to moderate those too. But I'm always going to have pleasure days and when I can eat what I want to eat. I always want to be able to eat what I want to eat. Ironically, program yourself then is built around enjoying your favorite foods as much as humanly possible. No, the most enjoyment you can get out of food is not how much you can shove down your throat. Okay. The most enjoyment takes into account other things as well. And the fact that you may not realize that is, is a problem, <laughs> you know, if you want to lose weight. So yeah, it, it helps when we're not so worried about the foods. Again, I, I, I get frustrated with the, the food noise thing, you know, from Ozempic and all these medicines, because I've been dealing with food noise naturally for almost 30 years. And there's a lot of ways to influence food noise. This is one of them. I'll tell you one of the fastest ways to trigger up a whole bunch of food noise is to say, I can never have a carb again after tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday, I'm starting my keto, no more carbs. I can't think of a better way to start triggering a bunch of food noise. <laughs> and I think you quiet the food noise down when you start to make peace with the food and you start to get congruent about what your goal is. You know, um, so user 162 says they're us using AI. Yeah, they'll be using AI. They're going to know what you're reading. Again, it's just the classic drug thing. It's going to be, and plus, never mind just even the cost of your health insurance premiums. I just feel like the cost of processed food has gone through the roof. I get a little bit of that stuff. I don't really eat much processed food, but I get my kids. I'll let them eat it sometimes. And uh, I eat a lot of fresh food, like fruits, vegetables, that fresh food. And uh, that price, those prices have not gone up very much relative to prices of processed food, chips, cans of Pringles, cookies. That shit's going up quick. I don't, I don't know. So if you're all eating that stuff, don't tell me about the price of healthy food because the price of unhealthy processed food seems to be going up very quickly. So I don't know. I think, uh, I think it's going to cost you lots of money. Um, but worse than that is the, the weight. Boy, this is the motivation piece. So folks, if you, if you're looking for weight loss motivation, I would suggest you go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session. I give you watch the video. I give you right after that, but then I'll send you an email for a motivation training I did. And, uh, it's like, it's pretty intense. But that's what motivates us ultimately. I talk about that in the training. Again, it's 15 minutes. If this doesn't motivate you, nothing will. 
I really believe that. But it's painful too, because pain really is. I think of pain, I, I guess I think of pyramids a lot, but I think like the motivation pyramid and the base level of it is pain. And then the top level should be pleasure. I think pain's good for making a decision and pleasure is good for carrying it out. So we can't just live in the pain all the time. Our brain's a pleasure seeking mechanism, but we absolutely want to have pain as the foundation floor of why we're making this decision. And you'll notice in your life, see, and this gets to mindset as well, that you're you're not understanding weight loss because you don't understand mindset. You're in an overweight mindset, a diet or mindset. And in that mindset, you're trying to force yourself to be motivated, but you're not really motivated. And if we look at things in your life where you're actually motivated, genuinely, uh, is, oh shit. Uh, when you're genuinely motivated, it's a non-negotiable. So if you're not doing, you're not going to smoke cigarettes, you wouldn't even think about it. You're not fighting off cravings. You just, the way you think about it, they're gross to you. You don't want to do them. Um, you don't have to worry about doing hardcore drugs most likely because the way you think about them, you, you gloss over anything that might be positive or enjoyable and you go right to the negatives. I don't want to do that. Uh, some days you don't want to go to work, but you still get up and go to work. Why? Because you don't want to live a life where you don't have income coming in. And it goes on and on. Okay. So everything that's a non-negotiable in your life, it's because there is a very solid pain-based floor. You brush your teeth. You go into bed, you're tired. You want to just go to bed, but you just brush your teeth anyways. Why? Because you don't want your teeth to fall out. So it, it's just, it's on and on and on. Now, when it comes to weight loss, what's your motivation? I want to look better. I want to wear a bathing suit to the beach. That ain't how you make real life, life, life decisions, non-negotiable decisions I was just referencing. You're not going to work. You're not getting yourself out of bed. You're laying there and you're like, oh God, I don't want to go to work today. And you're not saying, oh, but I want to go to work because I want to be the best worker I can be. I want to be, I want to do great. I want to be motivated. You know what I mean? You're not, they're not motivating yourself through positive pleasure motivation there. Your, your, your core is, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. Oh, Christ, I got to, I got to, I got to pay the bills this month. You know what I mean? And, and that's how it goes. And so when it comes to weight loss and you're like, oh, I want to lose weight. And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, but what about that cookie? Yeah, the cookie. And you're like, yeah, but what about a bathing suit? Pff, maybe, maybe I'll get a bathing suit. Maybe I won't. Fuck it. I'm going to eat the cookie. The cookie's pleasurable right now. I'll eat that. Thank you. And that's why you're, you're not doing it. Now for me, my pain-based motivation on the floor of it is my dad died at 54 of a heart attack. And I have, I have high cholesterol. Like I got, I got similar shit he must've had, you know, now I'm not, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to compound it with the weight and obesity and um, the lifestyle. And so I say, yeah, I want the cookie. I, I'm not going to have it because I, I don't want to live long. You see, you see the difference between our motivations? They're big difference there. So anyways, I put this into a training. You should go watch it. It's uh, again, Go to my bio, click the link, uh, and you'll I'll send it to you. I'm sending a link out today for it. Okay. Just a limited time thing. This is literally it's part of my program. I just pulled out some of the most intense stuff. It's a challenge. Don't get me wrong, you know. So if you're not up for it, if you're feeling kind of mentally a little, uh, you know, not in the best place, I would skip it. You know, it would require you to feel pretty grounded and solid. But if you're serious about your weight, if you say you're serious about your weight, you should definitely watch it because I think you'll realize, hey, listen, you want to know why you haven't been losing weight? Do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> if you're confused, I know it's cause you keep eating the wrong food, but you know why you keep eating the wrong food? Because you don't really want to lose weight. <laughs> you wish you'd lose weight, right? You wish, I uh, wish, I wish it would happen, but you're not motivated to make it happen. And that's why it's not happening. And so your motivation is the first hurdle you got to clear to even start losing weight and have any chance in hell of getting your goal weight and living there for the rest of your life. And that motivation that's really going to last you long term is pain based motivation. It's the thing missing from your motivation strategy right now is that you have vague pains of being overweight. They're not sharp. And so you're not really motivated. And so I can fix that for you. So if you've got 15 minutes, you're willing to, to test it out. Go check out that video. Uh, let's see. User says, hi, I'm stuck in a cycle of binging and restricting and I don't know how to break it. Yeah, great. I'm, I'm glad you realize what's happening. Anytime I tell myself I'll get serious, the day goes by and nothing I told myself I do is done. Yeah, yeah. I get that user. That's the challenge for everyone. But I will tell you the, the first step wrong you're making is you're saying, I'll tell myself I'll get serious. When people tell themselves they're going to get serious about weight loss, that serious means I'm going to, everything's going to be perfect starting tomorrow. You're not starting off strategically. You're not saying, okay, I'm going to start off tomorrow by eating a healthier breakfast. I'm not, I'm going to start tomorrow by really focusing and working on my worst eating habit. And I'm going to really focus in on that and get a handle on it and master that piece. Then move on to the next one. Sirius says, I'm going to start tomorrow. No, no carb, no more carbs after tomorrow. 
1200 calories tomorrow, no sugar tomorrow. I'm gonna count all my points tomorrow. And it's so overwhelming. You're like, you get halfway through the day and you're like, oh, fuck this. I can't keep this up. I don't want to do this. You know, so that's the big reason. And you said it right in your thing, a cycle of binging and restricting. Um, it's not binging and restricting. It's restricting and then binging is usually the, the case that, that it follows. So again, a binge follows restriction is <laughs> as much as the, the moon follows the sun. It's just one thing after the other. If you over restrict, you're almost guaranteed you're going to binge because you get so hungry. What do you do? Fight against every cell of your body, every, every sense organ you got in your body, you're just going to turn it all off and just be hungry all the time. I don't think you are. So yeah, you need to have a much more balanced approach. And even what you're saying, getting serious, now I'm going to over restrict. And uh, yeah, for half a day or a day, and then you're going to overeat. It's the same pattern. So how do we do it differently? You start differently. You stop over restricting. Stop restricting so so intensely. Um, and that that that's what changes everything after it. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. But what you're saying, again, if you, you don't look at it this way, but it's like, if I wanted to be out of control of my weight, what would I do? Like, what would you tell me to do? And I would tell you, if I wanted you to be overweight and struggle with your weight, I would tell you, you've got to cut the calories way down because I know you cutting the calories way down or you completely getting rid of a macronutrient or you completely changing some aspect of your diet that changes all of it. I would tell you to do that because I know you wouldn't be able to do it. And I know you'd go right back to doing what you always did. And you would keep on doing that over and over again until you got so apathetic, you'd never have a chance of losing the weight. And this is what the diets are teaching you because the diets don't want you to lose weight because the diets are all owned by the food companies. Uh, weight Watchers is owned by Heinz. Jenny Craig was owned by Nestle. Onions, uh, no, Atkins Food Products is owned by the same company as Carvel Ice Cream, Cinnabon, and Onions Pretzels. Slim Fast is owned by the same company as Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream. They don't want you to lose weight. So they pump this dumb diet bullshit into your head so that you do it and then fall into these cycles of restricting and overeating and you can't figure out what to do because you're doing what they told you to do, but it ain't ever working. And as you look around, holy shit, it's not working for anyone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's a uh, it is a little bit of a conspiracy. What's up, Connie? Hi, Jim. Watch the challenge. Watch the challenge. Just am that chart that showed me how little time I have left. Oh, I know it's intense, right, Connie? I get it. This is what I'm trying to tell you, folks. It's uh, the, you know, to me, you know, I I took my greatest trauma in life and turned it into my greatest gift. My dad dying at 54 of a heart attack was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And at the same time, I I utilize that now as the foundation of my motivation to master my weight. I am not going to contribute to doing that to my kids and, and make that happen. And so again, if you think just you go create, create your dream boards of your of people in bikinis and let me know how it goes. And I'll let you know how it goes with my clients who are focusing on real motivation. There's a science of motivation. This isn't up for debate. <laughs> you don't know how to motivate yourself. And once you learn, it's real obvious that when you focus on certain things, it pulls the levers. You've done this. Think about the times you've lost weight. Why? Because you were getting married and you wanted to look good in your dress because you had some big event coming up and you wanted to look good for it. When have you gotten actually motivated? There, there's something really going on that motivates you. And so if you're not feeling that, you're not going to get the results. You need to get motivated and you don't know how. So that's why I teach you for free. <laughs> I don't know how much more I can do for free. I tell people this, you know, like, but anyways, but I'm glad Connie, good job taking, good, good job watching that um, user. It's almost like I'm scared of being hungry or not knowing what I'll eat. And when I, but then I know I do set myself without feeling like I am. Oh, how do I feel I set myself up without feeling like I am? Um, yeah. I mean, everything you're saying user, it's, it's, it's so, it's so common, commonsensical to me. And it's, it would be commonsensical to you, I believe, too, if you weren't hypnotized by the diet industry. You've been hypnotized by the diet industry for your entire life. So you think like a dieter. And so everything you said is exactly right. I'm scared of being hungry. We're all scared of being hungry, folks. Okay, that's hardwired into us. We all have that fear. It's, you can't get rid of it. We're all scared of being hungry. So how do you deal with that? Well, let's be a dieter and let's just cut out as much calories and food as we can. Let, let's re let's trigger that feeling in us as much as possible. <laughs> let's, let's crank that. Let's we got a dial from zero to a hundred. Let's crank the fear dial up in us, the scarcity dial that we're not going to have food as much as possible. How do we do that? How do you do it? What would you say folks? If you wanted to crank up your anxiety and fear of not having of being hungry and not having enough food, what would you suggest someone do? The answer is accepted. What do you, what would you do if you wanted someone to freak out? 
and be really scared that they're going to be hungry, what would you do? I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd tell them to stop eating. Eat as little as possible. Get really, really hungry. Trigger that feeling in you. That's what the diets are telling you because they don't want you to lose weight. It's fucking goofy. You've got to manage your hunger. You've got to calm yourself down. You need to reinforce and remind yourself that there's plenty of food. How do you do that? It certainly is not by starting the day and say, okay, I'm not that hungry. I'm not going to eat breakfast. Okay, a lunch. What am I going to do for lunch? I'm not going to eat lunch. 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 Okay, okay, lunch. Whew, okay, we got through it. Now I'm getting kind of hungry though. I'm getting hungry. What am I going to do? I'm just not going to eat. I'm not going to eat. We got a carrot? No, no, no. We don't have anything. Let's have a little as possible. So you go through the day like that until you crack and the damn burst and then you eat everything. But goofy, goofy. When I put it that way, it's goofy, isn't it? So what's the alternative? You structure your eating. There's a lot of strategies to calming yourself down when you cut down your calories. Dieting ain't one of them. <laughs> calming yourself down is one part of it. Another part is structuring your eating so you can look forward to knowing you have food coming your way to keep you calm and relaxed about the food. Does that make sense? But am I crazy? Am I crazy? Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Everyone says start keto. That's the best or low carb. What do you think? I think keto is the fucking worst. I think it's so stupid. I can't even believe that we live in 2024 and um, keto is the number one most popular diet neck and neck with intermittent fasting. I Every day I look at the mirror of myself and I say, is this real life? Is this real life? Is it 2024 and people are still trying to do keto to lose weight? That's what I think. I can't believe it. I can't believe that it's 2024 and keto is the most popular diet. It makes me realize, though, I don't need much more proof that dieters are in a, a hypnotic trance. Don't you be a dieter and ask me if hypnosis works. How dare you? It works. What are you doing? Keto for the 50th fucking time? <laughs> are you crazy? How could you do this again? Don't you remember the last time you stopped because you don't feel good doing keto? It's boring and you hate it and you don't feel good? How can you keep forgetting that? <laughs> Why? Because you're entranced, hypnotized. Yeah, I need to get some hypnosis gear here, like a pendulum or something. But you've been hypnotized by the diet industry, fast weight loss. Keto's the best. It what? What's keto the best at? What? Losing weight quickly? Fine. Is it the best for keeping weight off long term? Does that matter to anyone? <laughs> you know? I'm joking with you, Agne, Adrienne. I, I'm not. I'm not busting your chops. I talk about this all the time, but it's just it's a silly plan unless you never want to eat carbs again, which I don't even know why the fuck you would ever not want to eat a carb. I, I just, you know, I had someone write to this yesterday, and a very smart person. They wrote a whole thing, and I appreciated their sincerity and genuineness. And they reference paleo person, you know, they reference a couple Native American tribes that they say just ate meat, but they reference the paleo person. It's not, I don't know. I don't see the evidence scientifically that paleo person ate hundred percent meat for what 13,000 years ago. All we did was eat meat. Then why do we have digestive tracts of omnivores? I just don't get it, but I don't have to. <laughs> what do you think about using Manjuro for weight loss? Um, yeah, I get asked this all the time. I get a, I, you know, it's fine. I, I, I have people in my program that are on it. So I, I appreciate what they're doing. They're looking to create a, a long-term strategy while they're using that as a crutch. Fine. Okay. But it's a crutch and, and it's not really in alignment with the goals that I'm working on people with, because I don't care just about weight loss. I care about weight mastery and beyond just being a certain size and weight, I want you to be the best version of yourself. So there's a strong mindset, lifestyle and nutrition component to it that Manjaro and Ozempic have nothing to do with. They're just going to help you eat less food, which by the way, you still have to eat less food. Still going to change your lifestyle. And uh, it helps because it best case scenario makes you feel kind of nauseous all the time. So for, for me and my clients, that's not the goal. That's not, that's not a goal we want to have to use that to lose weight. So, but, but I know for a lot of people it doesn't matter. So I support it. Whoever wants to do it. Um, if you, that's what you want to do, knock yourself out. Astra says, I want a bikini. Fair enough. That's fine. Now you can want a bikini too. I wonder why the motivation of being alive for my kids wasn't enough the last time, only five years ago. I was afraid of being hungry and the relaxation techniques absolutely cured that. Yeah, the relaxation is a huge part of that as well. That's so interesting, Connie, but that I think that's really important that things we think should be motivating enough a lot of times aren't. 
that, that, that you, what you said there, I think is so profound because I think most dieters are walking around thinking they're really motivated. I think most dieters walk around and think they re- no, Jim, I really want to look better. I really want to lose the weight. I really, really want to look better. I want to, I want to lose this weight more. You have no idea, Jim. I want to lose weight more than anything. Really? Really? Do you believe that? I don't believe that. Does anyone here, is there anyone here that believes they want to lose weight more than anything? Like zero to 10, 10 being the most, you think you want to lose weight at a level 10 and you're not? Are you being honest? Like you really think you're giving it a level 10 effort and you're not losing weight and you've been doing it for more than a week or two? I'm not saying there aren't some outliers that could be the case with, but but for the vast majority of people, that's not the case. They're not really motivated and they're not really trying. And it's because they don't really want to lose weight. I don't think most people that are overweight don't even want to lose weight. You know, I did a video. I I, I got. I'm going to make a video on that video. But it was basically saying that. What are the reasons why you may not want to lose weight? And it was very interesting because you don't think about it this way. There's a great chance that you literally don't want to lose weight because you're scared of being at that goal weight. You think it's going to be way too hard to maintain it and boring. You think that you don't want the attention from men. Uh, you think that people are going to expect more out of you. You think that you're going to be more visible in the world and more present and maybe less secure. Th- there's a lot of reasons. You don't like being overweight, but you've gotten used to it. And the idea of a different reality is terrifying to you. And don't think that that's not part of the reason why you're not getting results as well. So again, your motivation is the first hurdle you got to clear. And sometimes the things we thought were going to be motivating aren't. I I think that's important to recognize that. So good job, Kami. Um, Am New York? Hey, I'm New York. I have an issue where I crave chewiness and then run to candy. How do I stop that craving? Um, I mean, I would personally, me personally, if I was craving chewiness, I would probably look for other things that are chewy or somewhere in that ballpark that satisfy some of the chewiness that were healthier. And so that's what I'd probably do. Because that's what, you know, what's happening. See, this is, it's, it's hypnotic behavior. It's hypnotic behavior. Like, oh, I'm not going to, no more candy, no more candy. And then all of a sudden four o'clock comes around, we, we crave something chewy. And now it's like, oh, I wasn't going to have candy. I was going to be, and the craving gets stronger. Uh, oh, candy. And then we eat the candy. We said, that's it. No more candy. <laughs> it's the same fucking thing the next day. And then the same thing the next day. It's like Groundhog's Day. Being a dieter is like being Groundhog's Day forever. Isn't it? Can you give me some hearts? Do you think like, is being a dieter being like that movie Groundhog Day or every day? It's like you fucking just... <laughs> Everyone forgets. You just do the same thing over again, you know? So it's like, it's just fascinating. This is the, the core of the program yourself then um, system is the program yourself then method, which is really when you take a step back and you get some perspective on yourself. Because listen, folks, you've got three eating habits. You're three eating habits away from living at your goal weight. I'm being a little hyperbolic here, but but really you're like three eating habits is like 80% of your extra weight. You never look at it that way. You know, and so you just think of this, but this candy issue, there's a million things you could probably do with it, but you're never thinking about the solutions. You just keep like a, like, again, like a hypnotized person. It's like every time you finish the candy, it's like you're, you know, remember men Men in black where they would, they would hit the the thing and it would clear your brain out. It's like, every time you finish that candy, it's like they hit that and you, you totally forget. You're like, oh, that's, I'm not going to do that again. And it starts with that. As soon as you finish the candy, oh shit, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to do it tomorrow. And then all of a sudden you just go through the exact same thing. You want some chewiness, go to the candy. Boop. Oh, I'm not going to do that again. (laughs) Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Unless you do something different. You know what I mean? But dieters aren't really known for doing much different. So yeah. Where do I stop? How do I stop the craving? Yeah, you take a step back and test out different strategies. Um, And so the big three, reduce, replace, remove. You could eat the, 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 in, in order of easiness, reducing, well, that's easy and hard, like eating half the candy. That's one option. Okay. Easy and hard for different reasons. Um, replacing it with something else. I like that one a lot easier than removing it completely. Removing it's the toughest. Um, I would probably stick with replacing is my favorite or reducing. Um, those are the ones I go for. So there's this three simple strategies as well. Um, keto sucks. Of course it does. You're so right. So real. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I believe I have too much of anxiety to relax, to be hypnotized. Um, You have, you have just the right amount of anxiety to relax, to be hypnotized. I promise you, I have relaxed the most anxious people on the planet. Relaxation is just a skill folks. Okay. So it's like, if you can learn how to write with your hand, you can learn how to relax. 
It's, it's not, you know, take it from me. I I'm as stressed a guy starting off as, as you can get. I was a very tense dude. So, uh, it, it's a practice, you know, whether it's important enough to you to practice it or not, it's another story, but you absolutely can relax and being hypnotized. There's all rela hypnot hypnosis is a spectrum. And it starts in my opinion with relaxation and, and nowhere to focus of attention. But you you just learn it, and once you learn it, you can do it. So it's not it's not a question of if you can be hypnotized or not. Because um, let me ask you this, Dina: like if you watch a movie, like one of your favorite movies ever, if you watch that, yeah, guess what? You're in hypnosis. Every time we watch movies and TV, we're in a state of hypnosis. So we're hypnotized all the time. We can all be hypnotized. It's just allowing it to happen. So you watch your favorite movie in the world. You're not feeling anxious. You're relaxed and calm, just watching it. Uh, you know, your favorite movie, a nice movie, not, not some shitty, anxious, inducing, anxiety inducing movie. So we can all be hypnotized. Um, takes practice. Believe me, I'm a former frantic lunatic. Right? <laughs> yeah. Connie is absolutely. So Connie is same thing, right? I, the relaxation to me is, is physically the foundation of success, you know, for sure. And that's a big part of the program. So, you know, you get better at it. And, you know, Dina, the interesting thing for you, because you think you're, you're so anxiety induced and so, so much anxiety in you just relaxing for you, would probably be, I throw, I'm throwing numbers. Obviously I'm not, you know what I mean? But that could be 40, 50% of your weight issue right there. I bet, I bet you do a lot of stress eating. <laughs> so it's like, if you learned, if you focused on relaxing it, I mean, I've had clients that have been on anti-anxiety medications that have been gone off them. That's a regular happen. That, that happens all the time with my clients. So it's a normal thing because you've never learned how to relax. No one's taught you how to relax in an easy, systematic way. It's not rocket science. It's easy to do. Uh, you just need to be shown how and then practice a little bit, which is that's my program. Part of my program, I deliver through the phone. It's a five minute hypnosis session in the morning, just so you can practice a bite sized piece and you get better at it. You know, um, Kelly says I'd lost 70 pounds and gained it back after five years. Started November down 52 pounds today. Kelly proud of you. That's quite an accomplishment. Wow. And you did it, you've done it way better now. So it's like, tell me, Kelly, doesn't it feel like there's way more of a solid foundation under you this time than before? You know, that's the difference. Yeah, there you go, Connie. I was, I was thinking that too. Dried fruit is chewy, still not the best choice nutritionally, but better than candy. Yeah, light years better. And when you're thinking about your food, it's all about better, not perfect. And so if we're going from candy to dried fruit, that's a tremendous improvement. Tremendous. And you're putting real nutrition into your body. OK, um, I would suggest if you're going to if you're going to eat dried fruit, I'd suggest drinking water with it. OK, but it's a nice first step and that might be a nice first step to getting to eat just regular fruit. So, yeah, there's, but there's, again, it's, it's improvements. We build on top of improvements. Um, Diana Diva says your actions say what your priority is. I used to value my temporary comfort more than my health. Now I really do prioritize my health. Lost 61 pounds so far. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah, 61 pounds is wonderful. And it is about the priority. It's what we prioritize. You're in an in environment, in a culture that's constantly trying to put you to sleep in terms of what you prioritizing your health and your weight. They don't want you to do that. There's a lot of money being made off you being overweight, unhealthy, and unhappy. A lot of money. And so, you know, it's about seeing that clearly and reprioritizing things in your life again that, that but that implies a mindset Do you understand we can't keep the same mindset and then just force ourselves to take it more seriously this is what you're trying to do you've got a broken mindset you think like an overweight person and you're trying to with that same mindset oh, i know what i gotta do i'm just gonna do it now tomorrow's a special monday tomorrow's the most special monday that I ever lived because tomorrow i become this version of myself that's completely different than who i am today and so tomorrow I completely eat different from then on. It's like, huh? Where, how could that work? Could you explain that to me how that works? When has that worked? Who has that worked for? <laughs> Not too many people. Yeah, like Groundhog's Day mentality for sure. Great advice, reduce, replace, remove. Yeah, you like those, right? Yeah, the three hours of weight, weight mastery. Yep, forever for sure. Uh, what's up, Tabby? Jim, do you have any advice for someone that is losing weight but is going to is going too fast. I'm scared that I'm not in the moment. I crave fast food. Oh, wait, that's a different one. I'm not in the moment. Um, losing weight, but it's going too fast. I'm scared that I'm not in the moment. Huh? I think, I guess I don't really understand that. Not in the moment because you're losing weight too fast. I know people are like, I'd love to lose weight too fast. Would you though? Do you really want to lose weight too fast? 
I like nice slow and steady weight loss. Consistent, slow and steady, predictable weight loss is where I'd like to be. But what are you doing? What are you doing, Tabby, to lose all that weight? Maybe that'll help me understand the question a little more. Um, Agnon says, I crave fast food too much. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's built for. Fast foods, it's it's a drug. You know, processed food is like a drug. It's, it's manipulated. It's food stuff. It's not real food. It's food that's been engineered to be as addictive as possible. So, yeah, you're going to crave those things a lot. It's the way it goes, you know, but if you focus on that and you begin to, you know, whittle down your fast food consumption, the cravings go down, you work on your mindset, work on strategies, you move past it. I used to love fast food too. And I never eat it and I don't eat it because I don't want, like, I, I can't have it. I don't eat it because I don't want it. I don't want to eat fast. Food. I don't like what it does to my body. So again, it's a mindset thing though. Mostly I think it's, it's important. Tabby says, like, I'm not believing how thin I'm getting. Oh, oh, I got you in my head. I'm still XL size. Yeah, well, that's the, that's a story for everybody. You know, everyone's got to deal with that. When you're losing weight, you got to recognize the, the inside piece of it is your self-image piece, like how you think of yourself as a person and your identity. And so I think, you know, it's estimated 95% of people that lose weight put it back on. And I think that mental thermostat you imagine, that set point you imagine in your mind, I think it's a mental thing more than it is a physical thing. There's certainly physical aspects to it as well. Your body's a homeostasis machine. So there is some reality to that, but your, your weight is primarily anchored in your self image and your identity, how you think of yourself. And if you think of yourself as an XL person, you're always going to end up going back to that. And so again, program yourself then right after we get past motivation, the main part of the program internally is your self image transforming your identity. And I think most people just never even think about this. If you think of yourself as an overweight person, you're going to be an overweight person. So if you start to think of yourself as a thin and healthy person, you set yourself up for much better results. And that in and of itself is a process as well. But that's one that we focus on right from the beginning because um, it's essential. It's ultimately what's going it, to, it's setting your thermostat. It's setting your weight set point. It's the, it's the main thing, you know? So that's just a process tabby, you know? Uh, Connie says, most anxious person on the planet. Also been using Jim's hypnotiz hypnotism successfully. Yeah. The hypnosis helps you relax more than anything else in the world. When I started my hypnosis office, that was the first thing I really recognized. You know, sometimes I could help people lose weight using hypnosis, sometimes not. I was always able to help relax them. And as I got better at the hip at the, the weight loss piece, I can now help pretty much anyone I work with. But hypnosis straight up, the relaxation to me is probably one of the biggest benefits of hypnosis. You know, after you know, it, and then, then comes the, all the suggestions you're getting. I think those are powerful too, but I think the relaxation and inward focus is probably the most powerful part. You know, um, why, why do you pick that background behind you? I don't know. It's just a picture. It's just, you can see, you know what I mean? So I just always do that. My daughter says I get a different background. She doesn't like it, <laughs> but I'm just kind of lazy with it. I just don't care enough. You know, I think about, and I, and on top of that, I will tell you something. I'm, I'm very, not naturally talented at is making backgrounds for videos. I have tried that for years and I, they never look good in my opinion. So I don't know. So I remember I, that was actually, that was the big reason why TikTok's my preferred platform <laughs> because I shoot horizontal videos where like this just became the whole thing. So it's very easy for me just to make videos at my desk, lighting and all the rest of it. But anyways, Tabby says I do Pilates and go for my morning runs. I'm also in a calorie deficit and I weigh myself every day. Okay. Well, yeah, Tabby. So as long as what you're doing is sustainable, that's the other piece of it. Okay. So in order for our self-image to change, we need to be consistent. That, that's such a key part because dieters always know they're doing drastic things, but they know it's just a temporary thing. Deep down, they know they're not going to be able to keep this up for a long time. So they never really start to change their identity. Your, your self-image and identity really only change after you start to be consistent. Your mind says, holy shit, this could be us for a while. Then it starts to change. So the next thing for you, Tabby, is to, to reinforce your new reality it's to focus on how you're doing it. And to, again, just what I was talking about at the beginning, optimize it, make sure what you're doing, make your morning runs, your calorie deficit, your Pilates classes easier and more enjoyable and more effective. And when you make those easier and more enjoyable, it opens up a door in your mind that says, holy shit, we can do this forever. I really like this. And then you start to open up to the possibility that I could live this way forever. This is the new me. This is what I'm going to be. But that piece is important. Yeah, Kelly says, doing it with a better mindset is a great feeling. You've given me great tools. You're the best. Thank you, Kelly. But you're doing the work. So great job. That's quite an accomplishment. And I'm proud of you because um, I know it's hard to bounce back. You know, one of the hardest things to bounce back from is when you lose a bunch of weight and then put it all back on. That, that, that is very damaging psychologically. It's hard to deal with that. 
So I'm proud of you for getting back on, on the path and again, now doing it in a whole different way. So that's wonderful. Uh, Brianna says, I was doing so good week out from period and eight things I shouldn't have and pushes me further into a binge cycle, gained all five pounds back. Um, yeah, but Brianna, you know, I, I say this all the time with, with women, it's like, you really do have to take your periods into account, you know, and, and everyone's, everyone has to understand their patterns, but women, especially you can go into your weight and, and you're changing up your, your eating and your lifestyle, knowing that you're going to have this bomb dropped off on you every month and it's going to affect you a week before a week after and a week during, you know, and it's up to you to figure out how it affects you and to strategize around that. Right. So again, Brianna, the, the difference of, you know, like, like if you just like what happened happened and now you're just like, Oh, I was doing so good. Now I gained all the weight back. Then you're no better off. Okay. But now you're in a better place than you were because now you can look and say, Oh, how does this affect me? How does my period affect me? Oh, it makes me tired or it makes me hungry or it makes me crave or whatever. It makes you something. And then you say, okay, when it comes around, I'm going to expect that. Let me prepare for it. Maybe I'll get a little more sleep. Maybe I'll focus on relaxation a little more. Maybe I'll nourish myself a little bit or whatever the strategy is that helps you solve whatever the challenge is. You know, but if you just say, oh, I, I lost it. I gained five pounds back. You've, you've wasted all that time and energy and learned nothing. And you're just going to repeat that over and over again. It's up to you now to look back over the last couple of weeks and learn something from it. So the next couple of weeks coming up, you can optimize and get better at it. Hope that makes sense. Um, Alex says, did you watch the Oprah special last night? If so, thoughts. Oh, I'm already feeling triggered. What is it all about? Fucking Ozempic. Is that what it's about? I can't stand. I, I love Oprah too. And I, her and the weight loss. I wish she'd just shut the fuck up because she is. I don't have no weight watcher. <laughs> She's probably a part owner. She probably created Ozempic. I can only imagine. I, I haven't even, I will watch and I will have thoughts on it. And I hope it's good. Yeah, it's it's what is it? It's a medicine ad, right? She's probably a part owner of this shit. I love Oprah sometimes, but this stuff, man, she's just like laying lambs to the slaughter. And I got no problem with the medicines. Like, I'm not anti-medicine. I just think that the last person in the world you should be listening to about weight is Oprah Winfrey. She's nothing. You have nothing in common with her. She's not a good role model for you to lose weight. I'm already triggered. I will watch this. I already know. I already know it's a commercial for weight loss medications. And it's the worst kind of weight loss commercial because you don't realize it's a commercial. It's hypnosis, folks. I'm telling you, knowing knowing weight, knowing hypnosis is so important in this culture. But I don't know. Maybe there's good stuff too. So maybe you, you watched it, you loved it. And now you're like, oh, shut up, Jim. But I'll, I'll, I'll watch it and have some thoughts on it for sure. But I, I, I am already biased. I have a feeling I already know what it is. Um. Tabby says, yes, it's sustainable. I love Pilates and running with passion. Thank you, Jim. Good, good job, Tabby. Um, Brianna says, the problem is I mess up and I sabotage and keep myself stuck longer than I should. Oh, yeah, I get that, Brianna. Yeah, the, the number one skill of weight mastery is the ability to get back on track quickly. Okay, so we all mess up. The, the mess up's not the problem. The, the problem is when we don't learn from it and grow from it and evolve from it. Um, so the problems are fine. Pro problems are your greatest teachers. When you make a problem, the secret is to learn from it. What can I do better next time that would help me with that? When I mess up, what is messing up? When does messing up happen? How does it happen? If I go back in time, knowing what I know now, what could I have done differently? You know, that's how you move yourself forward. Not by never messing up again. Hope that makes sense. Tabby says, that's how I see myself forever. Wonderful, Tabby. Yeah, then now you just have to kind of let it soak in. Again, just because you kind of want to see yourself that way, you got to let it flow down and now let it become who you are. Let it become your identity. Um. Her mark says, I noticed that if I'm not dieting, I'm binging. It's either I eat in a deficit or I binge. Yeah, classic her mark. Again, it's the all or nothing attitude of most dieters, right? Where you're just stuck in this all or nothing thing. And um, it's it's unsustainable. It's a stupid model. I would suggest you replace with an all or something model, you know, where you're either, again, now that I, mean, I, I wouldn't diet either. So in terms, of, in terms of all, I don't think dieting is a good all strategy. I think dieting triggers binging, you know? I think it's probably one of the main causes of binging is dieting. So, but, but that awareness, her mark, her mark is great to notice that. Cause yeah, you say like every time I, if I'm not dieting, I'm binging, I have two modes. So what's the solution? That's, that's where things get interesting, you know, N recognizing it's great. 
Okay. Cause I get all this perfectionist. They could tell me for 10 days, they'll go on about why they're overweight. I don't give a shit. What are you going to do to fix it? What can you do to fix it? What's the solution? We got to keep bringing ourselves back over to the solution. So if you're either dieting or binging, what's the solution? What's something you haven't tried yet to manage your weight? If, if you're either dieting or binging, what's something else you could do? What's another way you could approach this? Right. Notice that you, you've, uh, it's like, like you just ran into a wall. Uh, uh, but you, you, so again, I, I could sit here. I'm not going to give you answers because it's up to you to figure it out. It's, it's, I think it's obvious we keep focused on this question. I keep dieting or binging. What else can I do? How else can I approach this differently? And the secret isn't to diet and not binge. They're both problems. They both, they're, they're yin and yangs to each other. Um, <laughs> Connie says, I thought of you, Jim, when I saw the Oprah special. Yeah, I have to see this fucking thing. Yeah, there goes Sarah. Yeah, it was propaganda. They tried to convince people the only way to change your mindset was the meds. Yeah. I, I already I already know. I, I don't even think I'm going to be able to watch it. <laughs> like, I, you know, maybe this is the kickoff to the food noise. I, I can't stand it. I wish I'm getting enough of her. <laughs> She's the fucking last person to listen to. Are you a billionaire? You got personal chefs. You got all the money to get on these medicines to get checked to make sure you're fine with them. It's, it's makes me nuts and I'm not against the medicines again. I, I think there's a time and a place for them, but Oh, it's just nuts. Yeah. It kind of says need to be triggered. I'm going to let it go now. I'm going to watch it first and then I'll, I'll talk about it more, but it's just the same shit. I don't care. Whatever people got to do what they're going to do. And, and I'm fine with that. I just want to be, I just want to be able to offer my little, my little slice of, of solution that, that I offer and the people that, cause the people and, and Oprah's Oprah. So she can do what she wants. I don't know what she's doing and I don't know what her motivations are. Did you know she was on the board of Weight Watch? It doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, everything's a fucking conspiracy. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? You don't know who to trust. Um, so my, my goal in life is to be, uh, my, my goal in life is to be at least be the, the, the most honest source of weight mastery advice that I can give you. That That's my goal in life. And uh, so I don't care. If, if you want to take medicines, let them take medicines. If that's the only way you think you can do it, fine. I, I support you too. Okay. But for the people that want to take it on as a personal development project to really master their weight, th then I'm here for you. All right. But he says, I did keto last year from May to November and lost 40 pounds. It's back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keto, keto is not, not a very good strategy for much long term. Um, every time I go to the, into the kitchen, I snack on something, even though I say to myself, stop. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blondie. It's funny because that's what I mean. Like, like everything's hypnosis. So it's like, you know, I, I, I go into the, the kitchen, I say, stop. And then I eat something. Words don't mean anything other than what they trigger. Okay. So it's like, just cause you think the word stop means what it's meaning that that pattern you run always leads you to go and snack. And yet you're, you're like, why isn't that working? I say, stop. Why isn't it working? Well, I'll tell you why it doesn't work. If, if your subconscious mind doesn't understand negatives. Okay. To prove it to you. If I tell you, don't think about a banana, stop thinking about a banana, stop thinking about a banana. <laughs> what are you thinking about? Yeah, right. You think about a banana. So just because you're saying stop doesn't mean shit to your subconscious mind. You're thinking about the snacks, and you don't have a better strategy or solution in your mind other than that. So you can say stop all day and night. It means nothing. As a matter of fact, it's a very manipulative way to to trick people. Um, and which is what diets are. Aren't, aren't diets? Aren't diets basically stopping certain foods? Right. So you do your keto. I'm going to stop eating carbs. And of course, you don't think of carbs. You think I'm going to stop eating cookies. I'm going to stop eating my favorite muffin in the morning. I'm going to stop eating my pizza. And it's like, then you just start thinking about it more. And then you start, start salivating and craving for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for doing these lives. I work full time and I like hearing stories and advice I can listen to. Oh, you're welcome. Mai. Yeah. That's what I do this for. Again, I want to be a solution for people. My mission in life is to help as many people as possible live at their goal weight. So I think that, uh, I'm glad that I can, help people while they're working, <laughs> make the time go and put something, you know, beneficial and, and hopefully interesting in your ears. Uh, on my trampoline, I love the idea of moving my body and doing something while I listen to you. Yeah. I think that's a great strategy, Kelly. I, I know a, a bunch of people do that. Um, it's a wonderful strategy to, to walk on the treadmill or walk in it, do anything physical, go for a walk while you're listening to this, I think is, is wonderful because it's two things at once. And, uh, yeah, just be that, that again, that's habit stacking. It's, it's beneficial. It works. 
that's pretty, pretty proven method. So good job, Kelly. And then you associate it. You associate it to your motivation because when you're listening to me, you're, you're motivated to lose weight. You're thinking clearly, you're calm, you're relaxed, you're more focused. You're thinking more sanely about your weight listening to me than pretty much anything else. Because again, cause I'm, I am being honest with you. Like, again, I, I, I'm not, I'm very clear. I have a, I, I coach and I have a program. Um, I have things I sell, but I don't give a shit if you buy them on the podcast. I'm not selling these things. I'm doing this for free. I'm not trying to bullshit you like Oprah who's doing that's called an advertorial is what we call that in the marketing business where it looks like, it looks like a special, it looks like a weight loss thing. It looks like an interview with Oprah, but it's really a commercial for the medicines. She's probably part owner. She'll probably sue me. Cause I said that I probably can't say that, but okay. So I don't mean that I, she's probably not part owner. Um, but the point being that when it comes to weight loss, yeah, it's, it's a tough world out there because you can't fucking believe anyone. Everyone is, is full of shit <laughs> as far as I could tell. So I try to be the one, you know, genuine, honest voice, you know, and while I do have things I sell and, and you can work with me, I do this for free and I give more away for free than anyone that genuinely I want to help you because I want to be the one we're one of the few. I, I, there, there are some people out there, but but I want to be one of the few that really isn't just telling you shit to sell you stuff. I want to tell you stuff that's going to help you. And um, yeah, so anyways, great job. Do you make Spotify, podcasts on Spotify? I do. It's called um, Program Yourself Then. It's on all the podcast platforms. So go uh, go check it out listen to it. And for anyone who hasn't done it yet, go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session. That's really good. Uh, it's about 10 minutes, but it's a nice kickstart session. And then I give you a video, three steps to master your weight. I, I would suggest watching it about 25 minutes, but it lays out a whole strategy of what I'm talking about. So to make it much clearer, um, what we're doing here. All right. Uh, but yeah, the podcast on Spotify and all the other platforms as well. Uh, Sarah says, I have a snack. I have a snack in the afternoon as part of my strategy. Yeah, that's brilliant. Of course. It's, it's what works for you. And, and what we, we got to get out of the all or nothing thing because we can't be all all the time. You, you can't be all pretty much ever. Like it, sometimes we set such a ridiculous level of all for ourselves, but we think we have to do that. We make it almost impossible to comply. So we need to build around long-term sustainability. I think that's the best strategy. And so that, that's, I think that's smart, Sarah. Yep. And says, yes, walking on my walking pad while listening. That's great. Yeah. That's what I mean. You associate anytime you can associate some movement with listening to this stuff and being in this mindset, that's, that's what I will tell you a little peek behind the curtain of what I'm always looking to do on these podcasts is to me, these are hypnosis sessions. They really are. Cause I'm not just saying things to you. I'm saying things to you in a way that's meant to change your subconscious mind, which is just a fancy way to say, change the way you think about things. You, you've got to stop thinking about weight loss like a dieter. That's the first step. And you need to change the way you're thinking about it. And so every time I get on these, I do these Monday through Friday, at least an hour every day. And it's, it's literally, it's an hour of hypnosis basically is what I'm offering to you for free. And it's the best gift I feel like I can give you because it causes you to start thinking about things differently. And that's the secret to change is to change how you think about things, not to think the same way and then just force yourself to act different all of a sudden. That's not a good strategy. All right. Oh, that's cool. Thanks. Thanks, Faisal. That was a cool. I've never seen that one before. The galaxy move. Um, what Nibby eats. Why is it that even after reaching goal weight, many of us don't feel like it's enough? Yeah, that, that's what I was just talking about a minute ago because it's the self-image piece. It's the identity piece. Now, what it comes down to is that your, your subconscious programming, your automated way of being, your mindset, your primary mindset is that of an overweight person. Okay. So you primarily think of yourself as an overweight person. You know this, like if you just stop thinking about your food and tracking food and losing weight, if you, if you just kind of like live your life and do what you just do, you're probably going to be overweight. Oh, look at that, a boat. I just got the coolest things. I've ever seen these. Are you brand new? Are you some kind of hacker? You just do these things? Um, I think I'm, I'm like approaching the old age. <laughs> I'm so impressed by, by any technology I see. I think you're a hacker if you could do it. Um, but but yeah, the self-image piece, right? So it's like, so so most people, even when they lose the weight, so so people, their automatic, automatic, their self-image is that of an overweight person. Their mindset's that of an overweight person. And then what they do is they diet to get themselves down. But dieting is a conscious process. You have a conscious and a subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is the party that's running the show. It's in charge of all your habitual thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Your conscious mind, your prefrontal cortex, and it's where your, your focus is, your attention, your strategic thinking, and your willpower is. 
it's the part of your mind that knows why you should lose weight, what you should do to lose weight and tries to get you to do it. Your subconscious mind is the party that runs all your habitual thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So this is where your self-image is at and where all your behaviors flow out of. So what a lot of people do when they want to lose weight is they use their conscious mind to force themselves not to do any of the things they automatically want to do. And so you might diet yourself down to this goal weight, but the same problem exists. You know how to think like an overweight person and a dieter. You don't know how to think like a thin, healthy person. And so I think that don't feel like it's enough, I think is a response to, you, you know how to diet yourself down, but once you get here, you can't keep dieting. And so you want to keep dieting because the only other thing you know is to go back to being an overweight person. You don't know how to be a thin and healthy person. You never focus on living at your goal weight. That's why I say, I don't give a shit about you losing weight. I care about you mastering your weight. I'm less concerned about weight loss and more concerned about you living at your goal weight for the rest of your life on your autopilot. What's up, Vicky? That's what I want for you. So it, right from the beginning, that's what we're focusing on. And so I think a lot of dieters feel like it's not enough because they're scared that if they stop focusing on weight loss, what are they gonna, what's gonna motivate them now? Because the only thing motivating dieters is losing weight. And as soon as the weight loss stops, what's motivating you now? So I think that's that's some stuff to think on, chew on a little bit. Um, Haley says, I've tried lots of hypnotherapy and nothing seems to work, so I wanna choose healthier options. I've used hypnosis before for anxiety and it worked amazingly. Yeah, I can see that. Hypnosis is great for anxiety because it goes right to the source and helps you relax. It's not, I don't think hypnosis by itself is great for weight loss. I don't believe that. I think that, I think hypnosis is helpful. I think it's great as a support system because it helps you to relax and it helps you to, uh, the hypnosis helps you to relax and calm down and it puts good stuff in your head but you got to have good stuff in your head too. That's why I say, you know, I, I have, I have hypnosis programs and I haven't been selling them for a while. They work for sure, but it's like, they work as a supplement. You need to have some strategic plan of what you're following and it's got to resonate with you. So hypnosis isn't going to do that. And again, I use the example, uh, let me put it clearly. It's like, if you want to play the piano and all you do is listen to piano playing learning piano hypnosis sessions. Do you really think you're going to be able to just play the piano at some point? Do, do you know what I mean? Like, this is why I love like law of attraction stuff. I like some of it, but and hypnosis, same thing. It's like, cause when, when you're doing anxiety stuff, you're literally practicing relaxing when you're, when you're just listening to hypnosis for weight loss, you still, what's your strategy? You're not just gonna, you know what I mean? Like you need a strategy, you need a plan. That's why I'm programming yourself in. Another part of the program is the blueprints. It's it's blueprints. You fill in the blank blueprints for mindset, lifestyle, and eating. How are you going to think? How are you going to eat, live? And how are you going to eat? You've got to have a plan that's customized to you that works for you. Then the hypnosis is really helpful you follow, following that. But the hypnosis isn't going to help you follow some shitty fucking keto plan. It, it, there's no hypnosis that's going to make you follow keto forever. It's a dumb plan. Your desire to want to eat carbs eventually is going to override any hypnosis I could give you. So, yeah, so I, I don't, hypnotherapy, and to be honest, I I hate to put my hypno, hypnotist colleagues down, but knowing, like being good at hypnosis and being good at weight mastery coaching are two different things. I'm good at both. But if I was just good at hypnosis, I would not nearly be as effective in helping you to master your weight. I have spent 30 years obsessively focusing on weight mastery and hypnosis. So I think hypnosis is a very powerful tool for a number of ways. But if you just get a hypnotist, I went through a, a thing and now just reading scripts. They don't know this. I've done almost 6,000 private weight loss sessions, coaching hypnosis sessions. I use both of those things in my, my thing. So I understand the, the deeper strategies, the mindset, the lifestyle implications, the holistic aspects that really impact this area. So you get the results you're really looking for. And uh, a hypnotist just telling you happy horseshit stuff, it's not going to work. So I'm not surprised. But and I'm not surprised that it worked for anxiety too, because you're actually helping that thing. If that makes sense. Um, what Nivi eats, what is motivating you now? Yeah, well, what motivates me now is, here's the difference though. For 30 years, I've been focusing on, I always say, take your weight loss, wrap it in personal development. So for me, this process hasn't been and never will be and never was once I really got it. It wasn't about losing weight. It was about becoming the best version of myself possible. 
So I'm really focused. The program itself is really not a weight loss program. It's really a personal development program that helps you lose weight. And it's about being the best version of you possible. And one aspect of that best version of you is that you weigh what you want, but there's a whole bunch of other shit too. And why not look at it this way? Because now we tap into a lot more motivation. So what motivates me is not being at a certain weight. It's that I believe being at this weight allows me to be the best father I can be, the best husband I can be, the best son I can be, the best friend I can be, the best coach I can be, the best hypnotist I can be, the best business owner I can be. You know what I mean? So everything that's really, really important to me that jazzes up my life and gives it meaning is enhanced and is better when I'm in control of my weight. And I don't just think about a number on a scale. I think of it as a holistic thing because I think that I master my weight because I mastered my mindset, my lifestyle, my eating. And all of those things give me more energy, a clarity of mind, focus, uh, energy, balanced hormones, nourishment, you know, happiness, excitement, all these wonderful things. So I, I hope that makes sense, but it's a much deeper motivation. The average dieter is walking around with a very superficial veneer of motivation based on they want to look better. That ain't up to the task. So for me, again, the motivation pyramid would be the bottom level would be the pain. I don't want to die at 54 like my dad did. And the, the upper part is the pleasure. And that's where I really live most of my life, really in the pleasure of being the person I want to be. And so that's what motivates me now. Um, Faisal says, thank you for helping people. You're welcome. Thank you for your cool <laughs> little things that you gave me. Uh, uh, user 162, I struggle with pleasure eating. Like yesterday, eating one brownie turned into eating six. Yeah, you struggle with pleasure eating. That's why in Program Yourself Thin, we have five clean days and two pleasure days. Now, again, these are just, this is just a, you don't have to be those numbers. It's a philosophy first. And then you work into how the specifics of what numbers work for you. But the idea is that you want to have clean days, pleasure days. And I know people freak out about the pleasure days, but that's because you never plan your pleasure days. Your pleasure days happen all of a sudden when you can't restrain yourself anymore. You never sit down and think, how can I get the most enjoyment out of a pleasure day? You never think that. And so what you do is you say, I'm not going to have any pleasure days. I want to lose weight. No pleasure days. Don't eat anything. Don't eat, don't eat a brownie. Don't eat a brownie. Don't eat a brownie. Oh, shit. I ate a brownie. Blah, 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 blah. I'm eating all the brownies. It's, 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 count, it's literally, it's called the counter-regulatory effect. When we over-restrict something, we usually follow it up by going crazy with it. Colloquially, it's called the what the hell effect, right? Once you eat one brownie, ah, oh, what the hell? Who cares? I blew it now. You know, but then, then you finish your six brownies. You say, I'm never going to do that again, you know, only to repeat it again. <laughs> and so, um, you know, being able to focus on the pleasure days, that's what's, that's one thing I realized lately, just how unique that is. So this is why I say, I'm not just a hypnotist. There's so much, like, I really, when it comes to weight loss, weight, weight, weight mastery, I'm, I'm a coach as well. Like, like that's more what I hang my hat on. Cause I, I know the granular subconscious strategies that help you to master your weight. And I think the hypnosis helps those things. But honestly, the hypnosis, it's weaved through everything for sure, but it really comes down to the strategies. It's your mindset and strategy are the main things preventing you from living at your goal weight. And this is a great example of having no strategy. You don't know how to have a pleasure day. You don't know how to eat food for pleasure because every time you try to eat for pleasure, you go crazy. And then you say, oh, I can't eat for pleasure. And you get yourself into this trap where you say, I can't eat for pleasure because I eat everything. So I can't eat for pleasure, but I want to eat for pleasure. And then eat everything. You know what I mean? You're, you're trapped in this loop. How about we figure out how to eat for pleasure strategically so you can get the most pleasure possible out of it? Oh, the most pleasure me possible is eating seven brownies. Yeah, was that pleasurable? User 162 was eating, was that six brownie when you finished it? Was Were you in a state of bliss, pleasure? How'd you feel five minutes after you finished that six brownie? I'm going to guess you didn't feel that great. See, we're bullshitting ourselves. We're not looking at things accurately. And when we do, the whole process transforms before us and becomes much easier. Yeah. Yeah, the what the hell effect, right? You like that. Yeah, they've studied this stuff. I mean, again, there's so much science out there. Once again, to really understand where we're at, uh, where in the 1950s with cigarettes, where there were studies, shit, the Nazis were putting out material. They ran the, the most popular anti-smoking campaigns before the 50s. And so the science was out there of how dangerous cigarettes were but it wasn't out to the general population because the cigarette companies sat on those studies. They confused people about those studies and everything they could. And they're doing the same thing with the foods that we're putting into our body right now. These foods right now are neck and neck with smoking. Overweight related issues are neck and neck with smoking for the number one cause of preventable death. So it's, uh, 
we just don't think of it that way though. You know, that's why so much of it comes back to mindset, but yeah, you think eating six, seven brownies, I bet you didn't feel good at the end of it. Mario says, why does everything taste better after 10 PM? <laughs> yeah. Uh, why does everything taste better after 10? There's a lot of reasons for that. It depends on your specific situation though. Uh, Kelly says I made some and wrapped each one and froze them. Pull one out when I need one. That's great, Kelly. Great strategy. I would listen to Kelly guys. She, she's got like good long-term sustainable strategies. Haley says my, my emotional food issues started when I was five years old. Yeah. A lot of our issues started when we were five years old. You know, we all got our challenges, you know, we got to deal with them. Emotional food issues are right at the core of pretty much everyone's. So yeah, learning how to deal with emotions is, is huge. Get a huge part of the program, you know, is learning how to genuinely deal with emotions because you never taught that most likely. And once you understand that again, um, it makes it much easier to deal with emotional eating, resolve it. Um, yeah, Vicky says hypnosis helps focus inwards. Conversational hypnosis opens the subconscious up to new suggestions. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm doing for you all. I I'm, I'm not just saying words. I'm attempting to say words in a strategic way where it does influence you subconsciously and how you think about things moving forward. And when you change how you think about things, you change how you behave naturally. So, um, sorry to hear that. Mine also start early on, but it's, that's very young sending love. Yep. Yeah, she said, nope, I felt sick. Yeah, you felt sick after eating six brownies. So again, I will tell you this, just in a nutshell, there's three phases of eating. There's anticipation, consumption, consequence. And the food industry and this culture has focused us, hyper-focused us on the anticipation and consumption of food. So when we think about brownies, all we do is think about getting them and eating them. And we have been conditioned not to think about the consequence. And if you notice, this is a very similar pattern to people that are drug addicts or alcoholics, they get obsessed with the getting it and doing it. And they focus less on the consequence until they focus so much on the consequence. That's usually the thing that triggers drug addicts and alcoholics to finally make a decision in their life to let it go, to work on it, to enter recovery. It's when we focus on the consequence of it primarily because, you know, food is good and bad. It's good because it's fun to look forward to and then eat it. And it's bad. Some, if we're not happy with the effects it's creating for us. So it's both at the same time. The question is, which one are you focusing on? And what you're going to find out is you're always focusing on the anticipation and consumption. And then when the consequence time comes, you're distracting yourself by watching TV on a screen, just going to sleep, feeling like shit, not paying attention to it. But if you start paying attention to the consequences of your food decisions, five minutes after you're done eating, you don't have to wait till the food, the weight comes on on the scale. I'm talking about five minutes after you finish that sixth, seventh brownie, you sit with yourself and notice, how do I feel physically, mentally, and emotionally? You're going to say, I feel, I feel depressed. I feel sad. I feel angry. I feel absolutely enraged. You feel all this stuff. So it's like, you, just because we don't pay attention to them, it's not part of it. So as we start to expand our awareness and realize your food decisions include this. And when you're making a food, you say, oh, I want to eat another brownie. And instead of just looking at the anticipation and consumption, which drive the craving up, you say, okay, I do want another brownie. They're good, but hold on. How am I going to feel five minutes after I finish them? Oh, well, I remember this because last time I did this, I felt, I felt really full. I felt I was tired. I couldn't really like move that way. I didn't want to move much mentally. I was kind of mad at myself. I was saying mean things to myself emotionally. I felt frustrated, annoyed, pissed off, depressed, sad. Yeah, man, maybe I'll skip that because <laughs> that brings the cravings down without needing willpower. We, we brought the cravings down. So hope that makes sense. Um, Mario says, I grew up with almond parents who were constantly dieting and body shaming everyone around us. So I ended up binging at a very young age and hiding the food. Yeah, I get that, Mario. And I'm sorry that happened to you. Okay. Now, again, I, I, I'm supporting everyone here. I'm not, I'm, I'm very empathetic and sympathetic to everything everyone went through. But at this point here, if you're an adult, it's up to you, right? We got to look at the challenges that we have. We all have challenges based on our history and our, our lives. We got to acknowledge them and say, okay, I had these parents put all this shit in my head. And so now one of the things you probably have to deal with on a subconscious level is you don't want to lose weight because you don't want to give them the satisfaction of losing the weight. You spent your whole childhood creating this narrative that weight's not the only thing that matters. I, I, your parents are hurting you by saying this stuff. And so you create this response that weight's not the only thing that matters to me. I'm not going to lose weight to show, to make them happy. They're wrong. And so I'm, I'm not going to lose the weight because they're wrong. And now you're an adult and you can't wonder why you're, you can't lose weight. Are you living in this story with your parents? Now, I'm making something up that may or may not be true for you, but this is the type of thinking that gets you to solutions, folks. You see, I would never tell Mario, oh, come on, Mario, just eat better. I mean, that's every fucking diet thing. That's why it doesn't work. It's crazy to me. 
I, I, this is why I cannot believe it's 2024. I just can't believe this, that we have no good strategies. This isn't how it's supposed to go. Right folks. <laughs> Christ. Right. We're supposed to have flying cars and we're also have healthy food and this information age and good strategies and knowledge. And what happened? I don't know. You know, here we are trying to diet 2024, you know, so every diet's just telling you what to do. It's not going to Mario. It doesn't matter what plan you give Mario, whether you give him keto or intermittent fasting or Weight Watchers. It's, it doesn't matter what plan you sign them up for. They're going to have this same core thing in the back of their mind, perhaps. Fuck my parents. I'm not losing weight. You fucking jerks. I'm worth more than my weight. I'm not going to lose the weight just to prove to you that. So now you just resist it. Now, again, that's just one example of this. But you're saying, I'm not losing the weight. I don't want to deal with men's attention. I don't want to lose the weight. Holy shit, I can't live that way. I'm not going to never eat a carb. I'm not going to, so forget it. But there's some reason inside of you don't want, even want to lose the weight. We got to deal with that. So again, everyone's got their reasons. You need to identify it, acknowledge it, and then figure out a solution to it. But once you do, that, that level of solution has exponential effects. This is why the diet's not your problem. There's no diet coming around the corner that's really going to fix the problem. And by the way, Mario, so say, let's just say, and again, I'm not saying, Mario, that this is what it is for you, but let's just say someone had some asshole parents that were always putting them down and body shaming them, and they could never control their weight or didn't want to even when they were young, because they said, this isn't right. That's not right. I'm not going to lose the weight for you because it's not right. And so now you could take Ozempic. Now you can get on medicine to lose the weight. But guess what? That was never the fucking problem in the first place. So yeah, you'll take the Ozempic and you'll still put the weight back on. How do you describe people that get their stomachs shrunk down to this big and still put the weight back on? There's always the mindset piece. Ozempic, Mojaro yourself to... We'll probably see Oprah. Oprah will probably the weight back on in five years. I wouldn't trust her. I don't, I don't know why anyone is fucking listening to her about weight loss. I just don't get it. It's just weird to me. I love her for a lot of things, but weight loss, I, I just... You can, you can commiserate with her. You know what I mean? Be like, oh, me and Oprah, we've got the same struggle. That's fine. But I would not listen to her. She doesn't seem to have real solutions. And she never has. You know? I don't know. Don't, you know, listen, don't listen to me about running a media empire. You know what I mean? I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not good at that. You know, she is. She's great at lots of things that I'm not good at. So don't, you know what I mean? But, but I mean, I'm just saying when it comes to weight loss, I, why would you model her? I build everything program yourself then is built on is built on people who have successfully lost weight and kept it off. So, you know, and now she's going to go out there. You know, Oh, I'm like Oprah. The only way I can do it is with the drugs. Yeah. She's probably making a billion dollars from them. I'm just joking. I'm sure she's not. Yeah. Biggie says, we are not what we've been conditioned to believe. Took me years to get rid of these beliefs. Yeah, absolutely. This is the work. This is why I say it's a personal development journey. This isn't about, I promise you, if you've been struggling with your weight for 20 years, you're not just going to start a diet and then be fixed. You're not just going to take a pill and all of a sudden I'm fixed. There's also this deep shit in there. What? No, some people don't care about that. Cool. I ain't for you. You wouldn't be listening to me. But if you care about kind of like the deeper workings of what's going on that's led to this problem, again, I always say this as a metaphor, alcoholics refer to, alcoholics that just stopped drinking, they refer to them as dry drunks because they never did any of the work to un unravel what led to them being alcoholics in the first place. And so I'm not, listen, being a dry drunk is probably no question better than being an uh, active alcoholic. But again, it just depends on what your goals are. The people I work with and my goals are that I want to be, I want to be this congruent self-actualized -actual being. My best version of myself as best as possible. And just taking a medicine that quiets my mind down a little bit so I don't eat as much isn't going to do that for me. Now, I know for some people, that's the only goal they want. Great, great. Okay. But I want I want to figure this out. And I think, you know, so so again, it's just different goals. So whatever. But yeah, we're, we're not conditioned to believe what we believe, which is exactly what I'm talking about. Like to me, this has been my weight mastery path has been the most self like um, self-improvement path is what it is for me. And it's a self-discovery path. I've learned so much about myself through this. So, and I will continue to, that's the thing. I'm on this path forever. I love it. So it's more than just weight loss, you know? Brianna says, how do I get over the past week of shame from overeating? It's almost paralyzing and keeping me stuck. I know better too. No, Brianna, you don't know better. <laughs> that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. If you knew better, you would have done better. I, I hate that phrase. But I like it, but I don't like it because it was used one time with someone I, I 
um i know in a, in a snarky asshole way but, but it's a fine phrase right <laughs> but um you, d you don't know better Brianna, that, 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 that could be the beginning of, of the rest of your life right now. If you realize I don't know better, I don't, why did I overeat? And so what happens is a lot of times, how do I get over the past week of shame from overeating? Okay. We can analyze this and this is, there's a lot to learn here. If you feel shame from overeating, what happens is that shame prevents you from thinking about it or looking back. You just want to, okay, I'm never going to do that again. Or people do one of two things when they have a week like that. They either go in denial. Okay, I'm never going to do that again. I can't think about it. Or you keep beating yourself up about it. Either one of those things is just going to reinforce it to happen again because you've learned nothing from it. So the real secret is to let go of the shame. You did what you know. You can't tell me the last week of overeating was the first time you did it. You've done that many times. And so you look back at it and you say, what was going on there? If I go back in time, where did it start? Um, let me go back to the moment when it started. Knowing what I know now, what could I have done differently? This is what the program yourself in techniques are all built around. It's the redo rehearsal technique. It's the most important piece of the program, in my opinion, followed right by the blueprints. But um, because Brianna, you don't know, you don't know better. If you knew better, if last week before you start overeating, let's just say you, you over restricted and got really hungry, you got emotional, something like that probably triggered it. And it, imagine like that happened. And all of a sudden you said, oh, wait, I have this other strategy. I can call a friend and go to hang out with them and talk to them and work things out. You would have done that. So you don't, you don't know better. Don't tell yourself that. That's the most triggering phrase to me when uh, dieters are saying, I know what I got to do. I just got to get myself to do it. Um, no, if you knew, if you knew how to do it, you would have done it. Okay. So you got to learn, you got to learn. And that attitude of being in a learning mindset is really, really helpful. Mario says, you're right. I want to lose weight so bad, but I think my motivation is very bad, not strong enough. Yeah, absolutely. And it's nice to know that though. Again, I'm not saying that to put anyone down. I'm saying it to help you diagnose the problem because there is nothing in the world worse than thinking that you're doing absolutely everything you can and you're motivated at level 10 and you just can't lose weight. I've never seen that. I hear urban legends about that happening, that there's people that can't lose weight no matter what, but I've never, I've never done that. I, I've been doing this for 20 years, done over 6,000 private weight loss sessions. I've never seen anyone that has changed their eating and lifestyle who has not lost weight over time. So I think it's very important to check your motivation because I would much rather say, oh yeah, he's right. I'm not really motivated. That to me is like, we're this music to my ears because now it's like, oh, if I get motivated now I can get better results. But if you think you're giving your best, you're doing everything you possibly can, and you're still not losing weight. That's one of the most powerless beliefs you can have. And it's not true. And so you really want to make sure of that. Because if you believe no matter what you do, you can't lose weight, how hard are you going to try? What results are you going to get with that belief? I don't think very good ones. Haley says it's also that it's okay to be fat culture. Uh, yeah, I I think, again, I, I always have two sides to the, the, um, the, the what they call it body positivity, let's say. I, I like the part where there's no shame or guilt or feeling bad about your weight right now. I think that's wonderful. I think the you should start your weight loss process off by letting go of the game and the shell, the, the shame and the guilt and the anxiety and all those negative emotions uh, and start to feel good right now. That's one of the most powerful things you can do to, to clean up your eating. Um, on the other hand, so I like the part where they're like body positivity, but I don't like the part where they're always saying it doesn't matter what your weight is and you could be obese and healthy. Uh, the science I've seen does not say that. So let me walk a line with that one. Um, Jacobpedia says, I lose until I stop trying to be skinny and got real about my terrible family health history. I lose until I stop trying to be skinny and got real about my family. <clears throat> I'm sure if I understand that one. But yeah, family, we all have, well, not say we all, some of us have family health histories that aren't great. And even changing that up into a new narrative is, it's just so much subconscious stuff. I've said this before, but one of the challenges for me is like, and I'd been thin for a, a number of years at this point. And I remember really like, it was really like, is this really who I'm going to be? Because my father was known as an eater and that was his identity. And that was the identity that I held on to as a young kid. Even I would eat weird shit. Cause I just want to like, Oh, I'm like dad. And I got a lot of positive, you know, affirmation for that. And so, um, and reinforcement. So, so it was hard though. Like, you know, he passed away and it's like, I'm letting go of him in a weird way. You know, again, I'm not saying it makes sense, but subcon your subconscious mind doesn't make sense logically. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. I'm going to get into that now. Vicky says those Epic users will have to be on it for the rest of their lives unless they fix their mindset. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So again, I I'm not knocking it. You know, if people want to do it. 
um, I think that's fine. And I'll be here if I'm for, here for people that don't want to do it. And I'm here for the people that, that end up not wanting to do it anymore. And well, whatever. Um, Brianna says, I've had to let myself have things stop restricting down the cycle. It's getting me longer to get to my goal, but it's worked until I get stuck again every once in a while. I definitely keep beating myself up for it. Yeah. So Brianna, what we don't realize is beating ourselves up for it is just replaying it. And, and your subconscious mind doesn't understand negatives. So you say, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to keep overeating and overeating and eating cookies and eating it. And you're just reinforcing doing that behavior in your mind. Right. And you said something really interesting that's that's not accurate is that you said, um, I've had to let myself have things stop restricting to end the cycle. It's taking me longer to get to my goal. Uh, that's what we have to look at because what's your goal? If your goal is just to lose weight, then maybe it's taking a little bit longer to get there. If your goal is to live at your goal weight, it's not taking you longer at all because by having things that you like and being stop restricting, you're developing a long-term sustainable strategy so that you can live at your goal weight for the rest of your life. So change your goal. Your goal isn't to just lose weight. It's to live at your goal weight for the rest of your life. So when it comes to that goal, this isn't taking longer at all. It's the quick things that's taking, making this goal longer to get to. Does that make sense? By doing unsustainable short-term weight loss things, it's taking you longer to get to your ultimate goal of living at your goal weight for the rest of your life. That makes sense. Um, how do you feel about the carnivore diet and eating all whole foods, never falling off of it. Um, I think the carnivore diet is silly. I think it's silly and it's goofy and I don't know what society it's based on. Um, I had, I asked this question and a very smart person answered me and said, it's based on like one or two native American tribes, maybe one African tribe and all of humans 13,000 years ago. Well, when it comes to all of humans 13,000 years ago, I don't even believe that. Uh, I see differing science on it. And when it comes to Native American tribes, I'm not even sure if I believe that, but there'll always be occasional outliers. But are you going to base your entire diet off of one tribe that lived one time as opposed to all the people in the world that have lived in societies that have eaten carbs, fresh fruits, vegetables? Uh, and the idea, again, of, of eating carnivore diet for before 13,000 years. OK, so we were eating carnivore diet for what, 100,000 years? Do you ever look at go look at the digestive tract of a dog and then look at the digestive tract of a human and you tell me, you know, what you're thinking. Look at our teeth and look at their teeth. So, you know, I think the carnivore diet is silly and I think it's just the silly extension of the keto diet. That's what I think. Now, eating all whole foods, I think, is a good goal that you'll never achieve. And I think it's good to aim at. I want to eat as many whole foods as possible. And never falling off of anything, I think, is a recipe for failure because you're always going to fall off something. Who gives a shit? It's not about falling off occasionally. It's about what you do consistently. Um, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I like the body positivity movement. No, I like it too. I like I like the one part of it. I think it's it must be such a breath of fresh air for people because if you've been struggling with your weight, it's so nice to hear that, that not to be judged on it. I feel like Weight and height seem to be two of the last remnant things that it's okay to be discriminatory about with people. And it's it's absolutely offensive and it, it's horrible. So the body positive sense in that sense, I think is wonderful. Um, what I don't like about it, and I could see, I could see the body positivity movement being promoted by the, the food industry. That's how cynical I am. But so I like the first part where the emotional piece of it and, and letting you kind of let go of all the emotional bullshit of the weight. I like that part. And then I don't like the subtle message underneath it that it doesn't matter what the weight is in terms of health. I, I don't believe that. I do believe that you could be in the overweight BMI range and still be healthy. Uh, but I think once you start getting to the obesity range, when you're dealing with obesity, it, it's if you're in there for a while, it, it seems pretty clearly correlated with a lot of health issues. So I, I don't believe that. I don't. And so I, I think, again, I like one part and I don't like the other part of the message. And I think you got to watch yourself, you know, is what I think. Um, whoops. Oh, I see what Jacob Peter. Yeah, I didn't lose until I stopped trying to be skinny and got real about my. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, trying to be skinny is not enough motivation for pretty much anyone. It's just not, not a good motivator. So, yeah, I could see that. Mario says, it makes me very happy to see because my whole life I've been bullied for it. Yeah, no, I totally get that, Mario. I totally get that piece of it. And I think you should internalize. Again, I follow the Jeet Kune Do philosophy as Bruce Lee. 
Um, take what works, discard what doesn't. So I would take that positive, the body positivity part, be positive about your body at any size and weight. Yes. And I would question the, the if you're believing that it doesn't matter what weight you're at, you can still be healthy. Eh, I don't, I haven't seen that evidence and I wouldn't risk that. I would never risk that. I would never, ever risk that. So that that's how I think of that. You know, um, someone says con consistent is what six days a week or 28 days a month. Uh, yeah, well, it depends. Summer one consistent is it's individual. So it's like, you know, it just depends on where you're starting from. You know, if you, if you haven't, if you haven't tried losing weight or eating healthier in three years, eating better consistently might be one day a week. It, it's about starting to do something consistently and then building on it, I think is the strategy that has the best chance of success though. You know, um, Mario says, this is random, but do you believe fast food uses fake meat and that it's super horrible for you? Uh, oh, it, it depends on what you mean by fake meat. Uh, yeah, I, I think fast food uses, I think they use very low quality meat. I mean, I think meat in general, you know, if you're getting grass fed beef and meat, that's fine. That's one thing. But if you're eating like feedlot animals, there's no question that's not healthy. That's not what they eat. And so what happens is when animals eat diets that aren't built for them, like grain, like cows, right? They don't live off of grain. Uh, they get sick and then you have to give them lots of antibiotics. And so it becomes kind of this, this cycle. And so, yeah, I, I don't, I, you know, is it fake? I, I mean, it's, it's, I'm sure it's beef, but you know, is what's the quality of that beef? I don't think it's too great. You know, that's my opinion. So take it or leave it though. Oh, you show how are you going? Uh, what's going on? Um, I had to be honest with myself and look at the weight I've tracked for the last four years. And I'm just in a loop of losing weight quickly and regaining. Now just going to lose one pound per week instead of two to three. Show that's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. Like, that's so great. That's super. And show that she's lost a lot of weight too. So that, that's a wonderful realization. I'm so glad you had it now. Um, before you went through another regain lose cycle. This is wonderful. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Get on one of these calls. I want to talk about that. That's a that's a really big insight, I believe. Really big. Because now you've changed, you've stepped out of the norm, the norm. You've stepped out of the the thing you know. And it, it, because what we when we're doing what we know and what we've done, there's a lot of expectations built into that. And so if we're follow, if we're starting a plan that we've started 20 times before that we've done for a couple of days and then stopped, or done for a couple of months and then stopped, we're gonna go into it and on a low level, low key back here, it's like, yeah, we'll do this for a while, lose it, then we're gonna stop. So we need to get on a different path. And so Shomanique, that's a big, big realization because now you can start getting on a different path and understand why, all right? Um, Mari says, the most unmotivating thing for me is thinking I'll gain all the weight back so I don't even want to lose it because it seems useless. I know that. I know that, Mario. That's why, how many times a day do you hear me say, this isn't about weight loss, it's about weight mastery. I believe you should, I, I hope you never get on a weight loss plan again. I hope from, if you listen to me, the one thing I hope for you more than anything is that you start to realize the real goal is to master your weight specifically for that reason. Cause when you think about, I was just talking about this when I said, when you, when you start focusing on weight loss, it's the same shit you're referencing all the times in the past when you've lost weight and put it back on, it's a failure connection and association. So when you think about weight mastery, you have no, you've never tried to master your weight before. I know you've never tried to master your weight. So it's a fresh, it's fresh though. You know what I mean? You have no associations to weight mastery. And so weight mastery becomes the thing. And well, now Mario says, why is it so hard to maintain it? But look what you just wrote. <laughs> you just wrote that thinking I'll gain all the weight back. So I don't even want to do it um, to lose. It seems so useless. So you have never focused on maintaining it. Your whole goal has been super motivated to lose it. And the scale going down is your big motivation. And that motivation is so inspiring that it could force you to do unsustainable things for a little while but you've never once wanted to focus on mastering your maintenance and program yourself. Then we start with maintenance because that's the goal. The goal is not to lose stuff. The goal is not to lose weight. It is to live at your goal weight. We start day one with that goal, creating strategies that are comfortable and sustainable. If you think about starting off, starting off with dieting on day one, doing everything perfect. And you're wondering why, why is that hard to maintain? Well, cause it's wicked hard. <laughs> It's a lot easier. What if you started by focusing on your worst eating habit and you're really motivated? So you also focus on your first eating of the day and optimizing it. And what if you just focus on that and then you just relax a little bit each day, you feed your mind with positive stuff and you focus on that for a month. Now all of a sudden you've got strategies that are comfortable and easy to follow for your worst eating habit. 
You've optimized your, your beginning eating habit and that's helped you as well. Now we move on to the next thing. Now all of a sudden maintaining is not so hard. Do you see what I mean? So again, the maintenance is hard because you never practice maintain maintenance. All you do is you, I just want to lose weight. I'll lose weight. I'm gonna cut the calories. I'm gonna 1200 calories. I'm not gonna eat carbs. You do this crazy shit and you only do it because you lose weight quickly. Would you do keto if you lost a pound a month? Would you lose keto? Would you do keto if you lost a pound a week? Would you? Yeah. Would you do intermittent fasting if you lost a pound a week? So we have to take both sides into account. The only way you're able to get yourself to do these crazy diets is to have this, you dangle this carrot right out in front of you. I'm going to lose weight quickly. And then what happens when your weight loss happens and now you're not losing weight anymore? Where's that motivation going to come from to do this crazy shit? Yeah, you don't you never think about this, but it, it, it defines your entire pattern. It defines your decades of trying to lose weight. It ain't you. It's this dumbass strategy. Grant says, I lost 40 pounds, gained it back. I never thought at the time I'd gain it back. Yeah. Now I'm embarrassed my entire being. I'm wondering if this has become my identity. It doesn't have to, Brianna. Brianna, please get go to my bio on TikTok. Get the hypnosis session I give you. And for whoever isn't, if, if you're on, uh, you can also go to programyourselfthen.com. But get the free hypnosis session. But watch the video, Brianna. Okay, because I'm, I'm all over the place here. But in that that video I made, I go through the whole system. It's 25 minutes. You've been on here for more than 25 minutes. But um, yeah, th this will give you a starting point, I think, to approach this completely differently. You know? Yeah, Kelly says, felt the same way about extra skin I may have. My body wants the weight off, though, at positive. Yeah. Yeah, look at the positives. Yeah, and, and Kelly, yeah, again, and I know Kelly has heard that because we've talked about that. We're, we're always incongruent to some degree. We're, we're, they call it ambivalence. Part of you wants to lose weight and part of you doesn't. And we have to recognize that and deal with that in the beginning. You know, again, the, uh, what I try to point out, I can't explain it all here, but it's like what I want you to understand just as a whole is that there's, it's this mindset piece. Your mindset is the number one thing impacting your weight. And we need to get your mindset right in order for you to get the results that you're truly capable of. Uh, uh, strategies and tactics aren't enough. We have to also change your mindset. Strategies matter too. Now, again, you've never used any strategy. You've just used tactics. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to cut 1200 calories. I'm going to not eat carbs. I'm going to, you know what I mean? You always use tactics. So strategy is better, but, but even just strategy alone is not going to work without the mindset under it. You know, we need both of those things. Um, all right. says, do you think eating specific foods will give you different results? Even if the calories are the same? Um, I do, but that's a, that's a, the way you're framing that I think is inaccurate because you know, this is a debate. That's a slippery semantical thing. I think Yes, at the end of the day, calories are calories. So I could you know, put you in a jail cell and I'm in control of all your calories and all I do is feed you candy and fast food, but I'm in control of your calories. So I'll give you a thousand, thousand calories a day, but well, you're still gonna lose weight. But in the real world, if you eat a thousand calories of fast food and candy, it's almost guaranteed you're gonna eat another few thousand because it triggers your hunger and overeating. Whereas if you ate a thousand calories of nourishing healthy foods, you're gonna be less craving those types of foods. So where, where I look at it in the real world, um, the way, the way the form you're consuming your calories is going to Im impact your hunger and your desire for unhealthy food. So yeah, eating specific foods will absolutely give you different results, but it's because you'll, it's easier to eat less calories. Again, it all goes back to calorie density. If you want to, if you want to go deeper into that, but, uh, all right, everyone, I got to get out of here. Jeez Louise, that's going to be a short one today. And I want to get caught up, but, but it was good. I, I love I love working with you guys, helping you out. So hopefully this all helps out. Again, if you haven't yet, go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session, watch the video I made for you, read the emails, read the emails too. Um, they're good ones. And then again, check out the motivation video I'm sending you all uh, in my, in my, on my email list. And the podcast is Program Yourself Thin. Uh, it's on all the podcast platforms. Go check it out. And for those of you that are on my email list, doing the motivation, thinking all the rest of it, uh, thinking about getting the program, sign up for it. You don't have to get the coaching one. If that, that's a little too much for you, get the regular one. 297 is the best investment you'll ever make in your weight. Guaranteed. That one's guaranteed. So um, go check that out as well. All right, everyone. Have a super duper day. Thank you so much for your questions. I appreciate them. Have a great day and we will talk soon. Bye.